Mm-hmm. I'm gonna send it to the anti MLM lady because she's super awesome. Mm-hmm. I'd rather look like me than you any day of the week, anti MLM lady. Mm-hmm. Let's go. I'll give you content all day long, anti MLM. What's up, wave makers? It's me, Mommy Suna. They said we were crazy. And the person we're going to be examining today is someone who needs no introduction. It's our old friend, Furby Kirby. Furby Kirby, Taylor Kirby. <laughs> if you don't know, Taylor Kirby is the brother of the CEO of Paparazzi. Oh, by the way, my face looks like crazy because um, we're, we're gonna do makeup, of course. <laughs> I'm not gonna make you look at this all the time. Ew. So yeah, this this dude is the brother of the CEO of Paparazzi. Tippity top of the period mid as far as distributors go. There's obviously a bit of nepotism there. <laughs> Recently one of you guys sent me this video we're gonna watch today and it is maybe one of the most unhinged <laughs> and just like all over the place, kind of desperate even, desperate for recruiting. We'll get into all of that. Before we do though, I just want to thank the new sponsor that we have on this channel. Care of. Care of is a subscription service that ships high quality, personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your door every month. You take a short, in-depth quiz about your lifestyle and health goals, and it's super easy, and they'll give you a personalized recommendation, taking the guesswork out of what supplements are best suited for you. Care of aims to help you feel a difference in your healthcare routine, and they have a free app that will send you daily reminders to take your vitamins, which I love because I'm one of those people that has to set an alarm every day to remember to take my very important medications, let alone remember to take vitamins alongside them. Their vitamin packs are adorable, they're personalized for you, and you can take them on the go with you too. Oh, and the vitamin packs packaging is made of plant-based compostable film, so you can stress less about your impact on the environment. Care of sent me their Focus Blend Rhodiola for supporting stress relief, and their Lemon Passion Fruit Flavored Collagen Powder. I've never tried collagen drinks before, and honestly I was afraid it was gonna taste yucky because I've heard that other collagen powders don't taste good, but I am telling you, I actually really like the flavor of this collagen powder. It's tasty and easy to drink and I like it a lot, so if you've been wanting to try a collagen supplement, I highly recommend this one. If you've been looking for a vitamin and supplement routine, I have a very generous offer for you from Care Of. For 50% off your first Care Of order, go to takecareof.com and enter the code SavannahMarie50. That's takecareof.com Enter the code Savannah Marie 50 and get 50% off your first order with Care Of. The link is in the description box below. Thanks again to Care Of for sponsoring this video. Now let's go watch a furry man. So Furby. Oh my God, the way he's looking at me right now. The first frame of this video is terrifying. Okay, just to preface, I will be cutting a lot of this out. This live is two hours long and I do happen to know, I haven't finished it either, by the way. I haven't watched the whole thing, but we are going to speed it up a little bit so it's a little more consumable but also I'm gonna be cutting bits out because I know that there's like a, t a stretch of like 20 minutes where he does nothing but like talk a bunch of back and forth crap with people in the chat who are also paparazzi distributors and they're all just like talking about hanging out and stuff and it's like oh, I really don't give a shit about that that's not the interesting part that's really the most annoying part of this video there are a few parts I'll leave in just so you get the point because he does say a few wacky wild things during that as well but anyway, enough dilly-dallying. I'm gonna press play, and while I do that, please make sure you leave a like on the video and leave me some comments. As we go along here, I get the feeling that you guys are gonna have a lot to say about our old friend Kirby, or Furby, Furby Kirby, whatever. <laughs> His name is Taylor, but he's a very furry man, so we call him Furby. Okay, and of course, always subscribe if you haven't already, or if you are, subs or you think you're subscribed anyway, double check for me and make sure people are always getting unsubscribed from my YouTube, and we're like less than 400 away away from 60,000, so please and thank you. Let's press play. What's up, friends? What's up? Um, we'll see how this works out. <laughs> so um, it is uber, 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 uber late. Um, so do you want to know what I'm doing? I am, here, look, I'll show you. I am signing a box of my hook necklace. All right, that's what we're doing. We're signing uh, a box of hook necklaces. We're gonna have a, an honest conversation tonight, right? So it's gonna be kind of fun. Um, so if you want, if you want my necklace, we're signing them tonight, right? Because I do that. I'm that arrogant. Mm -hmm. You yes, are I that am. arrogant. <laughs> right? Um, so I'm writing my name. Did you all know my name's Taylor Kirby? Mm -hmm. And that's my signature. Don't wear it out. 
So, um, I literally am sitting here signing these because, so, um, I'll explain this yes, in a this second. This is my black diamond bring back piece from this last year. And I sent signed these. So it's this one, it's a hook. Some people call it the Maui hook, whatever you want to call it. Um, but the necklace, the name of the necklace is actually called off the hook. Okay. So for context here real quick, and I screenshotted this of what he's talking about, just to make sure that I have the uh, right information here. A first thing to address. Yes, he is autographing necklaces, but like not even just like autographing the actual necklaces, which would be hard to do anyway. He's <laughs> autographing the plastic that goes over. <laughs> The necklace is like, he's autographing like the packaging it comes in, the cheap ass plastic wrap. Like people are going to keep that. And I, you know what? They probably do. These people in paparazzi treat this man like a celebrity. And he kind of is. He's the CEO's brother. Everyone knows who Taylor Kirby is. Everyone in paparazzi anyway. They're probably gonna order this from Taylor Kirby and then be like, I'm saving this forever. You know what? Fine, you do you. So yeah, that is what he's doing. As weird as we think it is, it's just like, all right. Secondly, the reason he's autographing Autographing that one in particular. I just want to read the description of uh, this necklace. Finished in an uneven brown stain. <laughs> That's what I did in the toilet last night. Ew. <laughs> That's what I left on your mom's bed last night. <laughs> Gross. Anyway, this fan favorite is back in the spotlight at the request of our 2021 Life of the Party member with Black Diamond Access, Taylor K, aka Taylor Kirby. So if you don't know, Life of the Party in paparazzi is the title that certain uh, distributors are given who buy the most jewelry, not sell. No, no, no. This title is not for people who have sold the most jewelry. It's just for the ones who bought the most jewelry. For example, I'm sure you all have seen the video I have uh, interviewing Tracy Reed and Caroline Reed, two ex-paparazzi distributors who were also life of the party. They got life of the party and were still $200,000 in debt. You know why? Because yeah, they bought a shitload of jewelry, but they couldn't sell that jewelry. They didn't make their money back with that. No, no, they did not. So first point is life of the party doesn't mean that they're really good at selling. It means that they have enough money to continue to just buy inventory. And Tracy Reed had that lawyer money is what she called it. So she just kind of had a bunch of like disposable income to just keep buying buying jewelry and that's how she got life of the party. Secondly, again, as I mentioned earlier, the nepotism here is absolutely real. I'm sure that he looks at this as an achievement, but really honestly, like you guys, let's be honest with ourselves, right? If Taylor Kirby was not Trent Kirby's brother and Misty Kerber's Misty Kerber, Misty Kirby's brother-in-law. Do you really think that he would have organically grown to this size in paparazzi? Let's be honest with ourselves. I don't think so. You know, a lot of the people who make it to the top of multi-level marketing companies are easily marketable. They have an online presence, which Taylor Kirby has, but usually that online presence is because of attraction marketing. And that is not really something that Taylor Kirby has. He's life of the party. He's gotten all these prestigious titles and shit, but he's also the brother of the CEO. So can't take it that seriously. Anyway, yeah, I guess they brought this piece back because Taylor was like, I want this piece back. Oh yeah, that was the other thing I was gonna say. So when you're life of the party, you get to like design your own piece or something like that. And then they like name it after you. But then also, usually it's called like when Tracy had hers, they called it the Tracy. But this isn't called the Kirby, it's called off the hook. I don't know the lore behind that. I don't know the whole story. All I know is he's somehow involved with this piece in particular and now he's autographing the plastic that surrounds them. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I hope we're all on the same page now though. But um, I have a lot on my head that I want to- No, you don't. Combo, so you shaved the sides of your but head. if any of you while we're doing this have any that questions- That was a dumb joke. I don't think she really liked me because of what other people had said about me, right? And so someone asked her about me and she said, you know, if you'd asked me three years ago, I would have said he's a total a-hole. Right? She says this to my face. I love it. And she goes, but now I think he's so great. And, you know, and so she even said to me, you know, you've come a long way, right? So um, I have no problem speaking my mind. Here's why. One, I'm a guy and I'm already at odds in this, in, in this business, right? Uh, number two, I am the upline. No one has been doing it longer. There have been people who have been doing it more consistently over the years than I have. Um, but no one's done it longer than I have. Yeah, you're the Nobody. CEO's let brother. So again, and let me make this also very clear. So let me talk to you about something. You're going you're gonna to get my mind tonight. Right. So let me let me open up in the 12 years. Right. Well, now it's almost 13 years. There's never been a month in 13 years that my ex-wife and I as a partnership or me by myself have not been active. Not one month. Right. And, it, and, and I know what some of y'all are going to say. Well, that's because you make commissions. And of course, blah, blah, blah. let me let me back that one up. The first two years that I sold paparazzi with my ex-wife, um, there was no such thing as commissions. It didn't exist. 
but we sold and we sold and we sold and we sold. okay when he says commissions i'm pretty sure he's talking about like commissions from his team so like i don't know other mlms will call it bonuses team bonuses i'm thinking commissions what he's talking about so to be active i don't remember the exact numbers in paparazzi but Basically, you have to buy a certain amount of inventory every month to be considered active. I wanna say it was like 45 pieces or something like that is the equivalent of how much you had to spend to be active. And the reason they do that is they're like, well, because you have to buy product if you're gonna be in business, you, you need something to sell. So like, if you're not buying enough, you're clearly not selling, I don't know. So there's that. I just like, the way that he's like, you guys, I've been doing this the longest. It's like, no shit. <laughs> Your brother started this company, moron. Do you think we're all stupid? Of course you've been doing it longer. And on that note, it's like what we always say. Timing is everything in MLMs, right? And considering the fact that Taylor Kirby has been there since the beginning, since before they were even recruiting people because his brother was running this business, just says something, you know? You know what it says to me? It says, I got in early and when they switched to the MLM business model, I was the first one to get team members, baby. It's just like coming from anyone else, maybe it could be a brag, but coming from this guy, it's like super not a brag. So there wasn't commissions, but every month we bought and we sold, we bought and we sold when there were no commissions. Why? Because it's a product that's $5. 13 years ago, it was $5. 13 years later, it's still $5. I don't think you guys understand the magnitude of that. Look at something from 13 years ago and you tell me that it's the same price. Even the dollar store's more, everything's more expensive. So if you don't wanna like shout the, from the rooftops that we have the most amazing founders and the most amazing company, y'all have rocks in your head. I'm just gonna be very real about that one. Rocks, you're not very smart. But have you right? seen but, so here's my, here's my <laughs> the thing, jewelry right? you sell, sir? So I've had people reach out to me. Most of it ain't uh, cute. Recently, <clears throat> about people leaving. And what's interesting, I've been attacked. And what's funny is someone's like, oh, that was that post was directed straight at you. Well, that's fine. Direct anything you want to at me. Again, I don't hate you. And but here's my thing. You have a right to your opinion, but you want to try to say that I don't have a right to my opinion. Sorry, don't play that game. I, I don't play say that, game. that. You don't get to play that game, right? So you have a right to your opinion, you have a right to do whatever you want to for your mental health. I have a right to my mental health. And I'm gonna tell you, there is nobody in the field that's been attacked more than me. So if you want to talk about mental health, you better buckle up. Right? You're the one right. who brought it up, dude. So, with that said, <laughs> it's still good night. I haven't been to bed yet. It's 1 a.m. We're writing notes. We're writing love letters to people on my necklace. Right? That's what we're doing. I understand the mental health game. Hello? I do mental health Mondays for a very good reason. Right? Mental health Again. Mondays. Ew. If you come into this industry, you have to understand that there's this process called attrition. People will always come and go. Leaders will always come and go. People will use this as a platform. People will use this as a launch pad. Cool, awesome. My feelings aren't hurt, never. Even tonight, my friend Aaron Bywater. Aaron Bywater left uh, this week or last week, last week, something, I don't know. And Aaron sent me a message tonight and we were talking tonight, right? And I said, hey, you know I support you 100%. Like you go do what you need to do for your family. I, uh, I, I'm gonna do what I need to do for my family. But the other thing is, here's this, right? Here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you, if you are so influenced by other people that you're gonna make a, a career decision because of what someone else does, I'm here to tell you, you need to, you need to dig deeper and figure out who you are, right? Um, because here's what I'm gonna tell you. I've done it for 13 years. And like I said, in 13 years, I've never not been active. Why? Because it sells. I make money, right? And it so sells to thing. other distributors, so wants to tell dude. me, a paparazzi doesn't work. Also, none of us said that. You don't want to hear my response to that one. Your response is gonna be, of course it works if you work. <laughs> That's what they all say. So if you don't know, if you're kind of semi-new to this channel or new to the paparazzi drama, paparazzi existing is drama in and of itself, but anyway. It's been pretty much proven that this is a thing. I know Kirsty Flickinger, I think is her last name. <laughs> she is an ex-paparazzi distributor who's speaking out. She hasn't posted in a while, she's got some personal stuff going on, but she does really great videos and she did one that I thought was just mind-blowing. I'll link it down below. You should check it out. It's really good. She goes through, um, I'm pretty sure she goes through his posts actually and like looks at the people who are buying the jewelry. She looked at so many people and I wanna say like 90 something percent of people who were buying from Taylor Kirby, the man we're watching right here, were other distributors. Now you may be asking, Savannah, why would they do that? That makes no sense. Are they buying all that for themselves? No, they're buying it to sell in their store. 
Why are they doing that? Well, because there's like legitimate competition in paparazzi. I can't get my eye wings right, so deal with it. The competition is, and it's also been speculated and I'm pretty sure it got proven at one point. The higher ups, the elites, the people at the top of the pyramid in paparazzi, probably life of the party too, who knows? Just people who buy the most jewelry. They get like early access to their drops and they drop new jewelry every single day at the same time. However, there are people who get priority access pretty much and they'll buy out all the new shit and then like leave the old shit for everyone else to buy basically and then the uplines will be like well I mean if you didn't get your hands on this particular piece I got my hands on 200 of these pieces so go ahead um you can purchase them from me and then sell them in your shop and and even though they're doing this and not making a profit actually negative money when they do this so why would they do that well it's because it's instilled in these people to be like, I gotta have fresh inventory. The idea is if you have the fresh inventory, then people will stay and shop and buy your other shit. It's not necessarily the case. So long story short, he's all like, why do you think I buy so much jewelry? It's because it sells. Yeah, it sells to your, your downline, dude. Because when they go and buy paparazzi from the back office, they spend $2.75 per piece. When they go and buy shit from Taylor Kirby's website, they're paying the $5 plus shipping, plus tax, whatever else the fuck. So if they sell it in their own shop, they're not making a profit, but they're there like, okay, this person is gonna buy this, but then they'll also buy more. And that doesn't always work. That's how people end up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt with paparazzi. And we know that happens. This is how people make money in paparazzi. It's one of the big ways because not only are they profiting from the jewelry, but they're also profiting from their downline buying up the scraps that they didn't buy because they need to have inventory too. Honestly, if there's any MLM that I'm just like, that is definitely a pyramid scheme, it's 100% paparazzi because the uplines are not making money off of what their downlines are selling like most MLMs. No, the uplines and paparazzi are making money off of what their downline is buying as inventory. And then, since they don't have like wholesale licenses or whatever it is, they have to still pay sales tax when they buy wholesale, even though when you buy actually wholesale like other things, if you have a small business with like licenses and shit, I don't know exactly how it works, but you don't generally have to pay sales tax on that. But since they are buying it with the sales tax, they're literally customers. They're just buying pieces of jewelry for $2.75 each and then reselling them for $5. So then th that in and of itself, it's like, how the fuck is paparazzi? even making any money dude because that is a very low price point and I'll give him that you know what Taylor Kirby you are right about that paparazzi is only five dollars and that is very cheap for fucking anything these days a cheesy gordita crunch <laughs> at Taco Bell is $4.99 at least at my local Taco Bell it's probably more expensive in other places which I think is fucked up but I'm still gonna pay it because I love cheesy gordita crunches my point is to people who don't know any better anyway because one of the other things that is proven within the past year is that some pieces in paparazzi have a dangerous amounts of lead in them. So if you're just like a customer on Facebook, just wandering around and you find yourself stumbling on some paparazzi live stream and you're like, that's a cute piece, I'll buy it. You don't know that they have a lead problem. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. He wants you to believe, oh, it's easy. It's $5. It's so easy to sell this because it's so cheap. But first of all, most of them are really fucking ugly. <laughs> and second of all, sir, of course they sell because you're the one selling to your downline and making a profit while they're not. It's all really messed up it's amazing that literally i have people that are like my sister's 50th birthday party i'm wearing this and four people were like hey can i buy that do you sell that yeah it's five bucks that's five dollars yeah who the dollars. fuck does that yeah so if you open your mouth if you let people know who you are if you let people know what you do i'm here to tell you this stuff sells it's five dollars and here at the holiday time it is holiday time if you're not working okay so let me be very honest those of you who have ever worked retail sales those of you who ever worked holiday retail sales you work longer, crazier hours. Go talk to the FedEx UPS guy about what hours he's gonna work for the next two months. I dare you, I dare you. So when people say, oh, it's just, it's just too much work. Okay, well, you don't like money and that's okay. Point taken, I gotcha, right? I gotcha, don't worry, you don't like money. Cause you just wanna have an easy life. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. You don't get success, you don't get money, you don't get time freedom. You don't get that ease of that financial burden by sitting on your butt. I remember when I worked, like I have a degree in retail management. Um, I remember there were times I got home off shifts and I literally lay there and I was like, I only have three hours and I have to be back. I need to try to get some sleep because then I have to be back because we have to be there at 6 a.m. to start stalking. And oh my gosh, I'm so tired. It's 2 a.m. and we just got home. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember those days. 
So he's right about that. The thing that I love about this is that, especially right now during the holidays, if you're willing to hustle, if you're willing to grind, you can make a lot of money, right? You can, because I've done it for a very long time. We got these ah, shin balls. Ouch. Oh. Shin uh. balls? <laughs> No, Shin no. balls. Okay, so, so if you want any of these, you can say, hey, off the hook or your hook or your necklace times however many. And I'll sign it. If you want me to put something special on your package, package, not necklace, um, I can. And I'm more than happy to. Anyway, I have chronic illness and also depression. I can get through a lot and work my business. How the heck do you work through depression and motivate yourself to be consistent? It's a tough battle. I know I can do it. I just don't know how. So June more, I'm going to be very honest. I struggle with anxiety. I, I like in the last. So again, like I said, to the haters out there who are like, I have to quit paparazzi for my mental health. Have you been through what I've been through? Because even today, someone re reached out to me and said, you realize you're being targeted again, right? And I was like, I don't give two shiznits. From what I've been through the last two years, pff, good luck. Um, go ahead and trash me. Say whatever the heck you want to say about me. Because I don't really care. I heard it all and I dealt with it all. And if you want to blame me for anything, blame me. Because trust me, it says a lot about you. Um, but here's my thing, right? So do I struggle with anxiety? Yeah. Have I struggled with depression even in the last year, even in the last six months? Yeah, I have. 100%. Carla Monica and I were talking about you too, because she was like, <clears throat> Carla loves you. And I was like, I love Carla more, which we could talk about the real, the first time I really met Carla was at the grand opening in, um, at paparazzi. And she's like, do you know my name? And I was like, she's balls. You're one of the African American ladies. Y'all have like something, something names. You have Tyrika and Tyronica and so-and-so. I know who you are. You have a Z. She's like, what is my name? And I was like, oh, she's what you don't understand is that I have short-term memory issues. So until I associate, until I do that, my brain doesn't function properly. Not joking in the least. I've had TBI, traumatic brain injury. There's just so much there. Um, I'm not going to say much here. I just, it's really annoying. And it really speaks to what kind of person this dude is. That he even thought that it was okay to, to say that. To say any of that. To make fun of people's names, stereotypical women of color names. And it's like, sir, that's racist. No, like for real though, like why the fuck would you say that? And if he were just any old white dude on the internet, he'd be getting his ass picked apart for that. But since he's paparazzi royalty, no one gives a shit. I mean, maybe they do give a shit, but no one says anything because they're just like, oh, well, he's my upline. I can't piss him off. If I'm in with him, then I'll get far. He's the CEO's brother. Can't piss him off. You know, that kind of shit. I don't know. I just like, what kind of life have you lived where you've had the privilege to just like go around and say that shit and no one fucking stops you? No one's like, hey, Taylor, you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't talk like that. You shouldn't be making these connections like that. Like, just don't. You're stereotyping people and it's like, it's not okay. That was just a little thing that bothered me. There's a lot of things that he's said so far that I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, one other thing I did want to touch on. He was like straight up giving mental health advice. And he was also like, he said he had a degree in retail management, I think. And it's like, well, that's not psychiatry. That's not psychology. What makes you qualified to give fucking advice about dealing with anxiety. And then he had the nerve to be like scoffing at people who are like, I need to quit paparazzi for my mental health. Yeah, people come out of that company fucked up. And they probably go into that company a little bit fucked up too, but when they come out, holy shit, it, it, like I always say, it's a cult and you have to literally deprogram the cult out of these people. You know, there are some people who I think are, are doing some wonderful work against paparazzi, whether I like them or not, who really held on to the MLM lifestyle, I guess, if you will. A lot of the things that have been programmed into their head that's like totally okay. We see that a lot, dude. Oh, stabbed myself in the eye. After getting out of, out of an MLM, it can take years for them to deprogram. And here he is like making fun of people, making fun of literal cult members, trying to escape a cult. And he's like, you're gonna quit because of your mental health? Wow. If someone feels like they need to do something for their mental health, let them fucking do it. You're not their doctor. You're not their psychiatrist. Like who the fuck are you to give anyone advice on their mental health. If someone feels like they need to leave paparazzi to better themselves, to feel better in any way, shape, or form, well, let them fucking do it. It's none of your business, Furby. <laughs> Carla was like, you don't know my name, do you? And I was like, you have a Z, you're something, ah, uh. and she was like, you're an elite leader and you're in my upline. You should know who I am. And I was like, son of a mother trucker. And Stevie I mean, Weeks, right. who I like, but not at this moment, I didn't like her. And we have become like besties. And Carla is, I went shopping. She became one of my, my multiple wives, whatever it's called, sister wives. And, uh, and then Monica, That's not Carla, funny. Monica tell you that we were talking about You guys are shopping. from Utah. She's my boo. And I was one of the first ones that knew about her car that she was ordering. Did he say he was, oh my God.
Mm -hmm. I knew about her Lambo. He called she was her like, his I'm looking boo. At this, I'm looking at that. What do you think? I was like, go for it. She was like, I don't want to get something that other people have had. And I was like, go for it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, Carla and I are bad news when we get together. Not joking. Carla and I are bad news. Sounds like news. it. Carla's Lambo and my Ferrari. I almost bought a Ferrari the same time she bought a Lambo and then I bought my Lamb. Mm -hmm. See, Carla and I are like this. Mm -hmm. This is so no, pretentious. Right? What the heck? I wrote an E on my it name. It feels so Who slimy. This one? I wrote a name. My name is not Taylor E. And Monica Cox, three belts? Carla, let's ask this question. Look, this is a fun conversation tonight. Monica says you have three Gucci belts. Carla, don't mind people on here because Jesus is listening. So you can say whatever you want to, but Jesus knows the real answer. Carla Neil Pierce, how many Gucci belts do you have? Answer that honestly. And don't say, oh, I don't know. Liar. You know. Fucking pretentious. She's got more than three Monica Cox. All right, she I'm going to skip ahead like, like 10 minutes news. here. I wrote notes about this next 10 minutes. He's just going off talking to that Carla chick in the chat. It's so annoying. So here's my question. You want to join paparazzi? Here's the greatest thing. I, said, I threw the question out. Why paparazzi? We're going to pause signing this. If anyone wants this, tell me. It's $5. My necklace. Is that a sales pitch? <clears throat> why paparazzi? So when people are quitting, I, I keep, it's late and I'm tired. So people are leaving. And so if you're in this industry and you don't understand, ask Carla, we, we, we were friends with many people in many different companies. If you don't, if you don't see attrition or people coming and going, one, you're either not developing leaders. And a lot of times when you develop leaders, they feel like there's a growth, right? And, and they'll move and, or else they'll do certain things. Here's my thing. And it's my five core beliefs. 100%. I believe in it. Five, my five core beliefs because, 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 because you have to believe in yourself. And that's the hardest one, right? Most people that's where really struggle. And that's what I love about paparazzi. Our mission statement is epic because literally that's number one is believing in yourself because we believe $5 jewelry is not going to change the world. We don't believe in that. We believe that those who wear it will hundred percent believe in so yourself stupid. because when you wear it and you develop that self-confidence and all that stuff. <clears throat> that's number one. Number two is you have to believe in the company. Uh, number three, you have to believe, believe in the product. Number four, you have to believe in your team and the system. And number five, you have to believe in the industry. If you have those five core beliefs, no one and nothing will stop you from being successful. 100%. Join me. I would love to train you. I would love to teach you. I would love to see you find your, your self-confidence. I would love to see you find personal development. I would you love know to what? see that. Honestly, he's right. You do have to believe in all of, what did he say? Were those five things? Um, yeah, you have to believe in all of those to be successful in network marketing. If you don't believe in the industry, how are you going to make it, dude? How are you, how are you going to make this work out for you? The whole, I don't believe in myself shit. Like that's stupid. <laughs> I'm sure there are plenty of people who made it to the top of a multi-level marketing company without believing in themselves. <laughs> they just kind of fell into it. They're like, timing's everything. Maybe if I tried to get in five years later, I wouldn't be able to do it, you know? I don't know. I actually don't think that you have to necessarily believe in the product to sell it because some people like are so dishonest that they don't give a shit about that kind of stuff and they'll sell anything. It's really fucked up. I'm a single dad to three children. When I think about having to build an international team, which most companies are international, it's interesting because people say, oh, you guys are international. You're not a global company. No, we're not. Because what? We're bigger than your global company and we're only here in the United States. So take that one. What? Right? I can show you my numbers and then I can show you and compare that to all these other international teams. And I feel very blessed that I don't have to travel to Taiwan and Korea and Mexico and Peru to work with my team. They're all here in the US and my teams are bigger than those, right? I feel very blessed that we are that kind of a company. Because as a single dad, having the thought, I, when I used to travel all the time when I was in my 20s and 30s, right? Um, but here's my thing. The thought as a single dad of having to give up custody in order to train and build a team internationally, zero interest you guys i mean i get that it's different for mothers and fathers in general in this country i don't think anyone is ever asking any parent to give up custody to do their job it's not like you have to go live in taiwan for two years if you're not in paparazzi but you still want to sell jewelry like no <laughs> what are you talking about no one does that what a weird thing to say what a dramatic thing to say number two seeing people come and go i don't have a problem it's like my friend Aaron Bywater. she just left Am I sad to see her go? 100%. She was my battle buddy. We fought. Uh, well, we did actually fight. We had some arguments. It was great. But because we're very motivated, driven people. But we were like life of the party battle buddies, right? It was like, where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? I'm going to sell more than you. I'm going to sell more than you. I'm going to sell more. Not buy. I'm going to sell more than you. Where are your sales? Where are your sales? Right? We had this battle. I will miss that. Notice but how he had to make that distinction, though. In life with her children and her daughter was sick and all these things, right? I get it. Cool. We were messaging tonight. And I was like, I love you. I wish you nothing but the best. You know I have no hard feelings. But here's the other thing that I'm going to say. I have a right to my opinion. So when people leave and they want to shout from the rooftops, whatever their thing is, I'm going to shout from the rooftops, my thing. And, and if I say when you quit, and I'm not speaking about anyone specifically, right? But here's my thing. If you quit on something, and I don't care, I don't care if it's you quit drinking rock stars. I'm down to one to two a day. That's it. One to two instead of eight to 10. 
10 he rock stars things. a day? Not that. Not even How is he still but, alive? And my friend Jesse Lee, Carla knows Jesse Lee because she's in Eric Worre's thing with Jesse I Lee. I think everyone Jesse knows Lee Jesse thing, Lee. And it's funny, like, well, now that I quit, everyone's talking about quitting. It is going to get tough. It is going to get hard. But I have friends that have bounced from company to company to company every six months. And I've said, and I've done trainings on this, you lose your credibility when you bounce to company, 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 because you're asking people to join you and to trust you that you're going to be their upline and you're going to be there for the long haul. And in six months, here's what happens. Your friend, the reason why your friends don't join you is because they're like, oh, hell, Carla's going to join another company in six months. Like, do I really want to be, do I really want to buy a kit with her? Because I know that in six months, she's going to bounce to the next company. If you don't believe me, trust me. He's not wrong. It's a true statement. If you even ask Rob Sperry, go watch, I, I did it on my stories the other day. Go watch Jesse Lee's thing about quitting. She's like, the reason you quit is because it gets hard. Instead I of quitting, can't. It's hard Taylor, she blocked hard. me. You, you have, to, <laughs> she really you have to learn how to get better at those things. I struggle with recruiting. I'll be the first one to shout that from the rooftops. I used to be so good at it, but I've let the fact that I'm a single guy in a women's dominated, dominated, not only, women's dominated company, let it do it. Because back in the day, I was like, I would recruit up the wazoo. Because what I would do is I'd use my ex-wife as the, as the closer, right? She, she would become your new best friend. You know, I would pitch all the stuff. I talk about products. I talk about the oh conversation plan. I talk about how to get going. I talk about starter kits. I do this and that. Say so you really want to do it. Trust me, as a guy, I love that my wife does this because it has brought in so much money for us. And blah 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 blah. Sign up, and then I'm gonna have my wife call you, right? And I did that, and now I don't have that. And so I'm uber self conscious conscious about it because one, I don't want if you're sounds married, like you weren't good at recruiting. It was your wife. <laughs> so if I approach you about doing paparazzi, it's not because I'm flirting with you. It's not because I want to marry you. It's not because I want to have an affair. None of that. But so I don't think I anyone feel, thinks though, that. <laughs> So why paparazzi when there's all these other opportunities? Why paparazzi when there's all these other companies? Here's what I'm going to tell you. Because one, I know the founders, not just because they're family, but I've been in other companies. I've been in other companies. I've worked in other companies. You went live and you sold paparazzi and you created a customer and a following and blah, blah, blah. Yes, I do believe that some of them buy into you, but this is what they're buying. They're buying a $5 product. They want that $5 product. And my sales have picked up because people are like, I, I used to buy from so-and-so and they quit. I'm so glad that I found you. Guess how they found me? I was live. Yes. Sorry. What's up, Hatfield? You just woke up. You have to be at work in three hours. I'm at work. Isn't that crazy? I'm at work. We're selling, we're selling pieces. I still think that it's super annoying to hear him be like, I'm here because I worked for it. <laughs> Look at me. I'm working. Yay. It's like, but you didn't really work for it. You, It got handed to you. That's nepotism. That's why you're where you're at. Would you have even joined paparazzi if your brother wasn't the CEO? If your brother wasn't the founder? Would you have even joined it? I don't think so. Maybe I'm wrong. That's a reality. We'll never know. He did say he was in other network marketing companies. Well, he said other companies. He didn't necessarily say M LMs, but I, I guess that was just implied. It just, it really rubs me the wrong way. It's it's just like such a tone deaf thing to be running around bragging about when your brother's the fucking CEO. $5, my off the hook piece. I'm signing it. That's okay, 50 of you can just watch me sign and work. I'm at work. Shh, don't tell my boss. Your boss is your brother. <laughs> what piece am I signing? This one, this one. This is my black diamond bring back piece, this one. It's called off the hook. Look at my beard, it's dope. It's called Off the Hook and it's like Maui's Hook, right? Look at my beard, it's dope, he uh, says. I was just Googling it just to make sure. Black Diamond, what he's talking about, this is my Black Diamond piece. It's it's a level in life of the party. So like paparazzi has ranks like as a distributor and then they also have separate ranks in life of the party. <laughs> it can be a lot to keep up with, but that's what he's talking about. Do you wanna know why I love paparazzi? Because if you actually have the courage to have people over to your house, go to an assisted living center, show up to a boutique, put a, a tent out in front of your house, do all that stuff, post a thing and say, hey, come to my house, buy some jewelry. Pause. Can we have a conversation about this month? Your mom gives you a hard time about paparazzi? Why? Because you're in a pyramid scheme. You should have your mom call my mom. And my mom would school your mom all day long. I'll yeah, talk Carla, to your mom. Oh, I broke up. Oh, I'm falling asleep. This I live is all over the tomorrow. place. Like, I'm sure that I have had a lot of cuts here and there that you guys have probably noticed. And you might be thinking that I'm like doing a really bad job with making sure the topics of conversation flow. It's not that at all. He'll start a sentence about something, get distracted, and then move on to something totally different. It's very hard to watch. It's very hard to edit. I haven't even tried editing this and I already know it's gonna be hard. But guys, this is the life of a paparazzi rock star. A papa rock star. Ooh, isn't that the name of that website? Papa rock stars? Yeah. That lady who tried to get my videos about paparazzi taken down. That has nothing to do with anything. Sorry. Mm -hmm, because you have my mother who works for me and knows my hustle and my grind. 
And then you have my mother, who's also Trent's mother. And she knows their hustle and their grind. And she knows what this company has done for so many hundreds of thousands of families. To I what, bankrupt them? Will you leave this video up? Why? Are you guys going to turn me in and get me into trouble for this video? Julie Stewart. She's false. She's like, will you leave this up? Because then I'm going to send it to compliance. And I'm going to try to get you terminated. And then I'm going to send it to the anti-MLM lady. Because she's super awesome. Yeah, do that. I think he's talking about Julie me. Stewart. I'm going to send it to the panel and lady, and I'm going to send it to the tea timers, and we're going to trash the hell out of you. Don't worry. I'm already their target. <laughs> I think he's talking about me. Because <laughs> he's been in like three or four of my videos already. Like, he's like a car crash, dude. I can't look away. And he does shit like this. And listen, I'm not asking for it. I just get sent it. I get sent your face. You're hairy. Furby face. <laughs> Way more than I would like to see of it, sir. But, you know, that's what happens when this is the topic of conversations that, you know, I have on this channel. And then I also have an open Google form where you can just submit whatever you want to me. If you didn't know I have that, it's down in the description of all my videos. Like, if you ever see anything you want me to see, that's probably the best way for me to see anything. This was one of those videos. I don't go looking for you, sir. People literally send you to me. <laughs> so, yes, keeping encouraging people to send the anti-MLM lady your videos because maybe this is why, pal. Because <laughs> you just keep telling them to do it and they're like, okay. If I can sell paparazzi and have 60 people on at one o'clock, here's the other thing that I love. Here's the other thing that I love. Your brother's the CEO! Here's what I love. Here's what I love. Here's what I love. I have 60 people on at 2 a.m., right? Which I should be in bed. But I'm signing pieces right now. Because you're so um, famous. Here's what I love. People will say to me, oh, I just can't go live because I don't get any viewers. Well, when do you go live? I, know, I don't know. Right? Here's the other thing. Why did half of you look at your live? Because you're like, I bet you that dumb Kirby guy, I bet you he's live right now. Oh, he is. Who's on? He's got 57 people. Let's see what he's talking about. But guess what? You don't get that kind of reputation unless you actually show up. It's called grit. G-R-I-T. Mm -hmm. I show up. Every when, when you... But you're also a train wreck. Um, have issues like I do and you go live late at night and we have weird conversations. At least he admits he has issues. <laughs> They're not her tribe. They're my tribe. Monica Cox is part of my tribe. Stop mm -hmm. using the word yeah. tribe. Isn't that Please. crazy? Yeah. Hey, Carla, you still haven't answered how many um, Gucci belts you have. Gucci. Not Louis Vuitton and Prada. Gucci. I cut a That's lot happened, of him asking have, this to her three. but she's like, out, she but he asked Monica, her like 70 times. <laughs> Who knows what November is? No. Yeah. No shave November. Do you know why? Do you know what? No shave November is for your life is no shave november did y'all know that mm -hmm. huh do you know what no shave november is about oh well november is lung cancer why, why do we have all these cancer months can we have like non-cancer month like cancer free month i know he thinks he's being funny so but like no that's not november funny or testicular cancer the oh, dude that's... cancer that's why he was pointing so i will not be shaving. also i didn't know that is that true I will not be shaving. so my chiropractor who of the 56 of you who are on right now um, <clears throat> who was on my live when I was at the chiropractor and I gave him a thing and I said, This guy went live at the chiropractor? <laughs> Listen, I know that Taylor Kirby goes live a lot. Like, I mean, I obviously don't watch them. <laughs> Not all of them anyway. This is the same guy who sold paparazzi at a funeral. Like, he has no shame when he goes live to talk about his fucking $5 jewelry, okay? But can you imagine being the chiropractor and being like, Taylor Kirby all walks in and he's like, Hey, do you mind if I go live on Facebook right now? Ew! <laughs> what chiropractor would say yes to that? He probably wasn't in the office. He was probably sitting in his car or some shit, but he's making it sound like, oh, I'm I'm at the, hey guys, I'm at the chiropractor. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm at the chiropractor. Do you want to buy my jewelry? <laughs> Absolutely no shame at all. I tell everyone and everyone knows what I do for a living, right? Um, I honestly don't Checo know figure. what No Shape November is. You didn't know that? No Shape November is for testicular cancer month. That It's the dude month. Yeah. The dude month. Mm-hmm. Yep, get it checked out. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna Google that. You guys didn't know that? You guys didn't know that No Shave November was for testicular cancer? I think he's right. Well, you learn something every day, ladies. According to nationaltoday.com, I've never heard of it, but anyway. Well, it's not testicular cancer. Okay, no, no, no. There's two There's two different things here, but they both have to do with men's health. So he's on the right track, I think. So the idea of using facial hair to create awareness during November started in 2003 in Australia with a group of friends who coined the term Movember in reference 
to how they will be growing out their mustaches and collecting money for men's health charities during that month. Okay, men's health. Then this one says, on dictionary.com, for whatever reason, back in 2009, No Shave November began as a Facebook campaign to raise awareness and money for cancer research and charities. It was created by the Chicago-based Hill family after their father, Matthew Hill, died of colon cancer. That's colon cancer, not testicular cancer, but still, one thing says 2003, another one says 2009. Either way, I mean, guess men's health is on the table there somehow. Yep. Okay, so, yeah, No Shave Thanks November Thanks for teaching is, me something. I can get myself terminated for this. But what if I did like all very large beaded? The fact that he's like, I could get terminated for this. I'm like, listen, we're sitting here having a mighty good time laughing at this guy, goofing on him. I don't think that this is something worth getting terminated over. Now, one thing we know about paparazzi is that they will terminate anyone for fucking anything. If you're wearing a shirt they don't like, compliance will be in your email telling you to never wear that shirt again, delete that live video, <laughs> you know, you shouldn't say bad words, you shouldn't, you know, paparazzi's very, very bad about this kind of stuff. So it's just like odd to me that the brother of the CEO, it's like, I'm talking about testicular cancer and I'm gonna get canceled by compliance. <laughs> Why? I mean, that's a real thing that people are struggling with. And if No Shave November is literally about testicular cancer or colon cancer or whatever the fuck, if paparazzi, I mean, paparazzi, of course, they're not gonna do shit, but if they did, wow. <laughs> but hey, I mean, I think they've terminated people for less, honestly. Ooh, look at all those boxes of paparazzi though. back here for... Look at all that uh, lead poisoning. <laughs> so we could do this right now. Oh look, there's a rock star right here. Mm -hmm. Ew, how old is that? <laughs> look, y'all. Who's ready for this? Oh Jesus Christ, not these things. I think Taylor Kirby's a child. Oh, ones. Oh, that one like he's a grown ass man kid. Man toddler. Right. Honestly, if I had a beard, I'd probably do the same thing. I shouldn't talk shit. Oh, I have nutcrackers. Are you saying that because it's testicular cancer month? Ew, stop. So, why paparazzi? <laughs> you don't know why paparazzi? Please, please Heart tell us you, this time. It's domestic. And I love that. Um, another thing. Wait, domestic? Like, domestic would mean that it's made in this country, right? Because we know for a fact that paparazzi is made in China. It is not made in America. The company's headquarters is in America, but the product isn't domestic. What is he talking about? 12 years, we're still $5 and you still buy it for two seventy five. dollars And our comp plan has never changed. <gasps> We've never not paid commissions. We've never changed our comp plan. We have never reduced nothing. We have not changed PV points. We um, still buy for two seventy five. dollars We still sell for $5, 12 years later. Just saying, right? Um, that if you don't, so here's the thing. If you are uneducated in this industry, unheard of, unheard of. You know what that says to me? It says that our executive team, they know what they're doing. New pieces five days a week. <clears throat> We're not all trying to sell the exact same product. We're not. You couldn't even if you wanted to, because if you're an elite, you get first dibs. <laughs> Everyone beneath you doesn't. I love that you can literally walk into other people's houses. So here's what's interesting. Can I be very honest? And I don't want Maybe to Maybe don't really do mean. that. You have to be invited into really someone's house. You can't just like walk into it. It's truth. When you speak the truth, people can still get offended. But here's what's interesting. I love that people who haven't been active in like, and active I mean by like live and selling, in like six months to a year, have an announcement to make and are like, I'm resigning. No, girl, you resigned seven months ago. You just made it official today, right? Because seven months ago when you decided to stop going live, you resigned. Let's be honest about that one, right? So here's the other thing that I wanna say. I love how then they get their butt into gear to post every piece of jewelry that they have in their entire inventory stock and they sell a crap ton. Here's what's interesting. Here's what's interesting. I look at the pieces that they have and people are snagging up these epic ones. And I'm like, you know what? People would snag those up at $5. So I don't know why you're selling for less. But the other thing is, why were you not posting these albums? Like I tell my team, my freedom fighters, I tell them all the time, like post an album every single day, post an album every single day. Go look at my page today. I posted an album today. Why are you not posting an album? Because there are people who don't like you, but they will look at your page, right? Is it possible that the reason that they weren't selling anything at $5 before is that they really aren't worth $5. And then once you discount it, it's like, ah, all right, I'll bite. <laughs> because at that point, you just want to break even. I have people that don't like me all the time, all the time. So they'll shop for me. And um, so here's my thing. Why would you not, if you have epic older pieces that were so hot, but just maybe you weren't known, or maybe you're not going live, or maybe like my friend Melissa Tucker, she never goes live, never ever. 
but she posts wall drops every single day. She posts albums every single day. She does messenger parties every single day. And guess what? Guess what? She makes good money and she has epic pieces. And so I look at and like, literally, I've been kind of scanning some of these people's pieces because I'm like, I just want to see what pieces you have that you're sitting on and you didn't post for six, seven, eight, nine, ten months. But now you also find the time. That's what's shocking to me. Like you're going to resign, but you find the time to do that. If you found the time to do it, you're still doing invoicing. You're still doing shipping. You're still doing stuff. But like, why would you not? Despite how much I like don't want to ever agree with anything that anyone in paparazzi says, but especially Furby, he's kind of right about this. Like in the way that you're doing the same amount of work, the only thing that's different here is that they're selling it for less. So if that is the only determining factor of it, I mean, because $5 really is cheap for jewelry. So I feel like it's almost not that, even though I just like got done saying it was probably because of that. But like, I mean, I guess if you say anything is on sale, you put a sale tag on anything and people get excited whether it was already cheap to begin with or not but he he is right in the way where it's like you didn't have to resign if you, if you really had the time to sell all this jewelry and shit now you had it this whole time so why quit that's not to say like if you're in paparazzi right now you shouldn't quit because i'm just like that is like my job to tell you to quit <laughs> to tell you that you're in a pyramid scheme and you're being taken advantage of and you need to get out that's my job but unfortunately the big bucks in paparazzi is not made that way like really honestly every time you sell a piece of jewelry you get $2.25. You have to sell a lot of pieces of jewelry to make a living off of that. People who are making a living in paparazzi are the people with teams because they're making a commission off of what their downline is buying in inventory. And not everybody can do that. But if it was just a matter of selling the jewelry, sure, you could have done it. That's just not what paparazzi's about though. I don't care what they tell you. It's not what paparazzi's about. So go ahead and hate me. I'm not, I'm not casting blame. I'm, I'm making an observation, right? Like some of these people have epic pieces. And I'm like, when was the last time you posted those? Oh, seven, a year ago? What is an epic piece? Why? I need to look this up. Why? You're nuts. 100% you're nuts. There's a reason why, because you're nuts. I don't know if that's a thing, but they do have like an epic set is what it's called. But like, I don't know if that's what he's talking about or if he's just using the word epic or if like epic is what they use, like how in LuLaRoe, um, if you have like a, a pair of leggings that people are actually gonna wanna buy and wear, and that aren't super duper ugly. Uh, they call it a unicorn. Maybe that's what they're like, it's an epic piece, but it really is like the same thing as a unicorn. Maybe that's what he's talking about. Or he's actually talking about the pieces that are like from the Epic Z collection or whatever the fuck. I don't know. They weren't cute to look at either. What I just saw was just like, nah, but okay. This company is set up for anybody. You can be that tween, not tween, but like the 18 year old college girl. And there's great products for you to sell. And you can sell that. You could go to an assisted living center and sell to the old people and have fun, right? buy clip-ons and buy longer necklaces. Um, you can be a dude and sell like I do, or you can be a dude and sell dude pieces to dudes. 100%. You can do that all day long. You can, can sell, pieces you like sell this dude to pieces to women long, too? Right? Or is that off the table? Um, it's just up to you and your effort. So um, I look at it like this. Why do I love this business? Why am I still here? Why do I do this? Right? Um, because you have, like someone just said, someone on her team refuses to go live cool guess what if they're selling and it's the, and it's their level if they're saying you know what i only do live events cool only do live events crush them do them if you say you don't want to go live but you only want to do live events make sure you have your calendar booked for this holiday season and you will make a crap ton of money i'm not joking crap right? ton. here's the other thing if you want to sign up tonight uh paparazzi accessories.com forward slash one zero zero six that is my consultant id number yes um but here's my thing because if you're watching this most likely you can't sleep. Well, instead of just sitting and scrolling, why don't you make some money? I sold three pieces. Look, Dorothy Clark bought three of my necklace. Nobody else wants my necklace? That's okay, I'm not offended. He's just like, oh, she bought three of my necklaces. Why does one person need three of the same necklace? Now possibly to give out for gifts or some shit, or you bought them for $5 from Taylor Kirby, to put them in your shop now, and you're gonna sell those and not make your money back. Make it make sense. <laughs> Ultimately, it doesn't make sense, but like literally proof right there. He's like, this one person bought three of the same necklace from me. Dude, okay, hey, while he does this shit, let me just Let's remind see. you, this whole time he's been being like, so why paparazzi? He said it like three times already. The timestamp is an hour and 18 minutes at this point, and he hasn't even gotten like one sentence in about why we should choose paparazzi. Monica Cox is the best. She's so amazing. Oh, the Monica Cox, but don't ask her about Gucci belts because she won't tell you what the answer is. She won't tell you which one Carla should wear. 
And don't go shopping with Monica, because she'll take you to these horrible stores. <laughs> One little screen cap there. He fucking looked like Nigel Thornberry. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? One, that Monica Cox even knows that I exist. Two, you you're the CEO's Gucci brother. <laughs> so don't know it's funny when my haters would come at me for my hats. My hats are basically like the Louis Vuittons of the cowboy world. So when someone wants to attack me about my hat, one, you obviously don't know anything about um, Western uh, culture and fashion. And number two, you know nothing about Western brands. Um, so that my hat maker is the one who does all of um, the Yellowstone hats. And my shaper, the guy who shapes my hats, if you didn't know that that's what happens, they shape them. He's the one who does um, Kevin Costner's and Rip's hats specifically. He only does their hats. I mean, like of the staff. My hats are like Carla's belts. Probably about the same price too, actually. How much is a Gucci belt? I don't know. How much is a Gucci belt? I don't know. A lot. 700 plus? <laughs> My hats are more than that, but that's close. He spends over $700 on one hat. Gross. He's like, you don't know anything about Western culture. Bitch, I was born and raised in the Southwest and <laughs> I don't know anything about Western hats, I guess. Most people don't wear those. You have to be like really dedicated to the Southwestern cowboy culture to like wear a cowboy hat every day. Most people, at least in Arizona, maybe in like Texas. Oh, he's in Utah. I can't imagine a bunch of people wear cowboy hats out there. Maybe. I don't know, someone asked Mac. <laughs> the only reason you probably know <laughs> about Western fashion is because you have a lot of disposable income and you're just trying to find ways to spend it. <laughs> so you're like, you might as well buy a thousand dollar cowboy hat. I'm about to skip through this. Um, He's literally showing off his hat guy. That's what's always funny is when people like want to criticize me, I'm like, ah. You want to criticize me for my ugly hats? Well, look at the price tag. I mean, isn't Gucci the one who like, they ended up selling that like full body ski mask that was like all one piece or something like that, like something super weird. Just because you spend a lot of money on a piece of clothing does not make it fashionable and unworthy of criticism. Also, Sophia Nygaard, she's still doing stuff? I don't know. I know she had a series where she would like buy weird fashion. Like I, I think she had a sweater whose the arms were like, they would go down to her feet and shit. And she looked like the wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man, like shit like that. And it's like, that got a lot of criticism. She got it for fun for a video but like the internet blew up over how stupid that shit was. So listen, Kirby, Furby, Furby Kirby, just because your cowboy hats cost a shitload of money doesn't mean that people can't make fun of them. It's not like you're gonna be like, um, this hat cost me $1,500 or whatever the fuck. And I'm gonna go, oh, well, excuse me. It's a nice hat. I'm oh, sorry, my bad. No, if I tell you, you look ridiculous before I see the price tag, you're still gonna look just as ridiculous. And now you're pretentious after. <laughs> You're ignorant, so no, no worries. Yeah, ignorant. Um, anyway, so here's what I want to say. You're dork. Again, <laughs> as I end this. What company do you know of that when you sell so much, they say, here, you can bring back a, an old vintage piece. You can design your own piece. You know, you can do a piece in a different color. Like people, there, there's not a nutritional that's like, we'll let you design your own package. No, that doesn't happen. Here, we'll let you do your own flavor of this product. Well, they're no, just making you happen, feel special right? when you're not really that special. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I love that not only are we recognized with crowns and money and trips and all that stuff, but then they get to say, like, could you imagine if you were like in a diet company and they're like, we'll let you bring back any protein powder in any flavor you want. Okay. Or of any product that we no longer carry, we'll let you bring it back for a time. Okay. It does not happen. So the fact that we as a company, that they let us do that, it's amazing. And I love it. I don't know the if I call is, that amazing. Our founders still grind 15 to 20 hour days, right? 15 to 20 hours a day. So I believe in our company for many, many reasons. I believe in our company because you can take someone who lives in a trailer park and they can do this. You can take someone who lives in a mansion, like Miss Carla, and she can do this. Oh, how's that one come out? I mean, Carla nice? lives in a mansion because there it goes. of this company. And he said that she confronted him on launch day and was like, you should know my name. She was there when paparazzi launched too. Go figure, one of the richest people in paparazzi living in a mansion was also in at the very first day. Go figure. It's almost like timing actually matters when it comes to when you join a multi-level marketing company. That's so weird. Uh, uh. Look at that. Ew, like a, there's a like hair. Ew. Oh, dang it, that would hurt. Um, this man is so or, gross, I'm sorry. Hours. Misty works even crazier hours. And so here's my deal. When you have founders who work that hard and sacrifice that much for your success, 
there's a lot of reasons why I'm in paparazzi. There's a lot of reasons why I believe in this company. There's a lot of reasons why it still has my heart and soul. Um, Number one is nepotism. They fight for us to win. If you don't think they personally are sacrificing to keep our product at 275 and we sell it for five, you're crazy. They sacrifice, even if it comes out of their own money, for us to win. Did you ever think about that? So when you go to another company, cite your sources. I'm tell you, even at Costco, you used to get four cans of tuna. Now you get three cans, and it's more expensive. So you, you're missing a whole can of tuna in that pack, and it's more expensive. Like, do y'all pay attention? And yet we still get the same product for the same price, and we're still able to sell it. 12 years later. Okay, but how do we know that they're not like uh, maybe the lead thing never used to be an issue, but now it is because they've cut costs, right? I'm not I'm not saying that's a fact. I'm just saying like are we just completely ignoring the fact that okay, yeah, other companies are cutting the costs of their production by lowering the quality essentially or giving you less. I mean, with jewelry, you can't really say you're giving you less. I mean, they can cut the quality of the materials they use cuz they're clearly not that great right now. So, I don't know. I feel like there are still things that they can do to lower their costs of operating they're just not transparent about that there's a sacrifice on their end for our good so i look at it and i say most founders and executives in these companies are like ah, we'll increase the price they'll understand we'll say it's inflation oh we'll decrease the product to say if you want us to keep it at this price we're gonna have to decrease the volume then they're gonna say well that's fine because then people have to buy two canisters in a month because they're gonna run out faster then i'll make more money right not our not our team not our executive team they're like we will fight to keep it at 275 so that these guys can sell it for five dollars so that it is that value proposition I love that when it's this time of the year and it's holiday season, we can provide an amazing product for $5 for people to give us gifts. Lead poisoning bling, is bling, amazing. Bling, okay. And they're amazing bling, bling, bling pieces. You get adult men's pieces or Urban's, $5. I'm here to tell you, you can't go to Zoomies. You can't go to Quicksilver. You can't go to Nordstrom's and buy this for $5. I love that if you're willing to work, you can make money. That I don't have to feel like I'm scamming someone because I'm not scamming nobody. Uh, so that's what I was like when people were like, the paparazzi scam. I'm like, you are not a very bright person. You don't know what a scam is. Let me explain to you why we say that paparazzi is a scam, Furby. Because the way that you make a very large chunk of your money is by convincing everyone in your downline that they're business owners and then making money off of the inventory they buy, whether or not they fucking sell it or not. And you're gonna sit here and be like, oh, the reason you're not selling is because you need to buy more inventory. Or the reason you're not selling is because you're not going live enough. And, and it's like, no, it's that's not the truth. It's the truth truth is you sell a shitty product and you are making your money not I mean obviously he's selling the product but again check out Kirsty Flickinger's I'm sorry if I'm saying her name wrong but she's so sweet but like check out her video I've linked it down below it is unreal what she unearthed about who is buying his jewelry spoiler alert almost every single order that she went through was through a paparazzi consultant like a paparazzi consultant bought like 10 pieces of multiple things from him why to put in their shop. Now you might say, well, it's not a scam. No one's making them do that. Yeah, but you're like, it's a culture thing in paparazzi. They all fucking do it. Okay, they don't all do it, but like, this is not unheard of. I, I think at this point, it's kind of like an unspoken thing. I'm, I mean, you guys probably talk about it behind the scenes all the time in paparazzi, but like to us outsiders, it's kind of just like an unspoken thing that we just know is happening at this point. I mean, we literally have proof of it. And you might say like, well, nobody's forcing them to do that. Sure, nobody's like holding a gun to their head and being like, you must buy from my shop but they're manipulated and they are coerced into doing so because they believe that it will help their business. business. Meanwhile, you get to sit back and live in your fucking mansion wearing a $1,000 or more cowboy hat, drinking 70 rock stars a day. You get to just sit back and do whatever the fuck you want while other people are going bankrupt because of the advice you're giving them. Like seriously, honestly, it's just so stupid because you want to make these people believe the way that you will make money is if you sell your inventory. They get too $2.25 every time they sell a piece. You have to sell a lot. Let's see, like a livable wage would be what? Like, let's say $3,000 a month. I know obviously like other, I don't know, I live in Phoenix. So $3,000 a month. If you're like one single person, you'll be living paycheck to paycheck. But anyway, let's just say that for example, divided by, right. So you'd have to sell 1,333 pieces in a month to make $3,000 a month just by selling the product. Is that impossible? No. Is it unreasonable not something that you should hold an expectation to like no I, you shouldn't because it's just unreasonable it's like that's not realistic it's not reality most people can't do that that's basically what i'm saying it's impossible sure do people make commission yeah people make commission but not off your sales Maybe. exactly that's why it's a scam <laughs> taylor kirby it's a scam because you are making money off of the inventory they're buying not your retail sales i mean you're obviously making money off the retail sales no matter who buys it if it's the distributor doesn't matter who it is i mean he admits it he's like yeah you make commission but not off of their sales no shit that's why it's a scam <laughs> 
first you want every single person beneath you to buy as much inventory as possible because that's how you make the bulk of your money. But of course, that's what you see when the mask slips off. When the mask is on, it's like, oh no, 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 I make all my money because I sell $5 jewelry. No, that's the mask. The mask is that you sell $5 jewelry and when it slips off, it's like, oh, I actually make about 10% of my money from selling $5 jewelry and the other 90%, I don't know, I'm just making these up off the top of my head. And the other 90% I make when my team buys inventory and it doesn't matter if they sell that inventory or not. You have people joining your team under false pretenses. When you sign up for something, believing it's one thing, and then once you get in there, it's something totally different, that's a scam, my guy. If you are told, hey, give me $5 for this product, and then you receive the product and it's something completely different than you expected, that's a scam. You go into it thinking that you're getting one thing and you get something totally different. It's a scam, dude. Or you get nothing. I mean, there's that too, because people in multi-level marketing companies often spend a lot of money and then never get that money back, never break even. It's so stupid that I even have to explain this, dude. And I know I've obviously explained it a bazillion times on this channel because I can't stop talking about paparazzi. I'm obsessed. It's just unreal. I think he knows though. He's high up enough and he is in the world of multi-level marketing company from a corporate level because his brother's the CEO. He's in that world. Like, so he knows, but he's tried to justify to himself. It's totally okay the way he makes his money. It's totally fine. They justify the Gucci belts and the mansions and the Lamborghinis and, all, and the Ferraris and all this shit. Meanwhile, people are literally struggling to feed their families. It's not justifiable, but of course you want to keep those things. So you're going to find any reason to not hate yourself for what you're doing. <laughs> Anybody want one of these? Off the hook, my necklace, it is signed for $5. Just say, hey, I want one of your necklaces, Kirby. I love paparazzi and I love my haters. Do you want to know why? They just motivate me to irritate them. I'll give you content all day long, anti-MLM lady. Thank you. <laughs> Anti-MLM me all day long, darling. I'd rather be me than you every day of the week. Just saying. Did he say, I'd rather be me than you any day of the week? I mean, yeah, you're way richer than me, motherfucker. Like, sure. <laughs> All right, but I, at the end of the day, I don't have to sell jewelry at a funeral. So at least there's that. But hey, you know what? If that's what you want to do with your life, you do that. Am I a rich bitch <laughs> living in a gated community with a Ferrari? Uh-uh. But hey, if those material things are what's important to you, more power to you. If you're confident in who you are and you're totally okay with what you do to make money, I can't stop you, but what I can do is stop people from joining you, and that's why I'm here, so. Yeah, I'll anti-MLM you all day, but I swear to God, if I get a cease and desist letter from Taylor Kirby one day. <laughs> Someone asked me, someone's like, do you know you're being targeted again? No, because I don't know any of them. I'd rather look like me than you any day of the week, anti-MLM lady. Yep. Me? Really, I'd bitch? Really? <laughs> than you. I mean, listen, okay, yep. fine, 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 fine. Yep. You know what? Shout out to the rooftops. He's confident in who he is. Great, good for him. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Okay, fine, I get it. And you know what? Maybe Taylor Kirby, maybe people think that you're attractive. <laughs> maybe. That's n neither here nor there. You're confident in who you are and I'm proud of you, dude. That's great. I'm glad that you would rather look like you than look like me. <laughs> but honestly, bitch, I got it going on. <laughs> so suck a fart. Yep. I'd rather be a weird bearded dude than you. Yep. Why? Yep. Shout out to the rooftops. Oh, dang. The other thing too that I do want to bring up, and like this is the whole thing, right? This is how I know we're bothering him. This is how I know personally that I'm bothering him. This is probably why I've been sent this video because they're just like, you need to watch this specific Taylor Kirby video because he's talking about you. I would have never fucking known, dude. I'm not stalking him. Other people might be, but I'm not. This is my job, right? Providing commentary on multi-level marketing companies and all that shit. Like this, this is literally my job. This is what I do for money. I don't care if it's you, Taylor Kirby, or if it's someone else in pharmacy or someone else in Ellen Mir, someone else in Young Living. It do doesn't matter. This is my job. Commentary on multi-level marketing is my job. But your job is not <laughs> talking shit about me. So for him to be like randomly bringing shit up on a two hour long live multiple times, two times, he talked shit about me two times. And listen, I know he didn't say my name, but he said anti MLM lady singular. Who the fuck else is spending this much time and energy in the anti MLM movement on paparazzi? Come on, please. He said tea time earlier too, and I was on tea, tea time often with Tracy and Jerry and Caroline. If he knows who tea time is, he knows who I am, because I was on the show also. No, this motherfucker knows who I am. I am 99% confident that he is talking about me. <laughs> also, the fact that he brings up, like, I'd rather look like me than you, it probably comes back to me talking shit about his crusty beard. <laughs>
Because I know I've done that. And listen, the longer you let it grow, the crustier it looks, bud. <laughs> but that's just me joshing you. I'm just joking around with you like old pals, you know? You can talk shit about my pink hair or whatever the fuck, I don't give a shit. At the end of the day, I make money off of talking about you, but you don't make money off of talking about me. There's literally no reason for you to bring me up, dude. That's how I know I'm bothering you. And that's how I'm pretty sure I know that your business is probably struggling because of it. Not just me, the work of many others, but I know I'm a main contender. All right. I, did, I sent my five more pieces. We have a tub of that. If anybody wants one, I will be selling them again tomorrow. Ooh, does anyone want me to show you what? That's a lot. I'm not gonna show you this table. I can show you what's out in the kitchen really fast. He signed all that shit. Wow. No wonder oh, this is a I'm two hour long life. I'm show you this. I can show you what's out in the kitchen really fast. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. You guys want me to show you what's out in the kitchen? I showed it earlier today, but some of y'all weren't on it because you were- What is it? Some more paparazzi jewelry? <laughs> I'm gonna skip ahead. He was okay, talking about taking selfies in a urinal. I don't, I don't need to hear that story. <laughs> Dark in my house. Oh. Let's see, it's 2 a.m. Yeah. and it's dark in your house. Shocking. Wait, wait. <laughs> Someone asked where Sage is. Right there. Oh. There's Sage. She says, Dad, I was sleeping. She's was so, so cute. Tired. I was so tired, Dad. Oh my oh, god. Sage. What a mm -hmm. sweet baby. It's like baguettes of iridescent rhinestones. Really, really, really pretty. Did you think, say those so are called baguettes? Christmas, like, we're in holiday shopping time, guys. So if you see something that you know would fit one of your friends or teachers or bunko friends or book club friends or church group friends um, or weird aunts or weird mother-in-laws, I got it. Honestly, like the, his lighting in his kitchen actually makes the jewelry not look so bad. <laughs> A little bit sparkly, but we all know it's just that rich bitch lighting, you know? I have all for you, right? Number one. Number two is that silver hoop with that, that Those are ugly. Tassel. Four, you have the copper, which has that paperclip chain and it comes down to the copper so and white. So much lead, probably. Number five, we only have three left. Oh, this one is two play. more, but it's the that silver and then that blue Damn. oil spill that comes, again, think of moms, sisters, friends, gifts, right? Number seven, think of your kid's teachers. Is your kid a bad kid and needs Ooh, don't some do that. extra Your driving? teachers deserve Bye. more than that. <laughs> this. Um, number 10, we only have two left of these. Those are so ugly. This one today. We have two left of this one. <laughs> they look like 10, baby blue color. <laughs> we have three left of this one. It's that, that silver and black stretchy. 12, this one just came in. The leather and the bullets? brass bullet in the office. We have the silver bullet, but this is the brass one. How just cliche came in. and gross. If you gross. have a dude, if you have something ugly. in the two left of this lanyard, that's just fun, right? It's that lanyard that has that Ew. bright flower. And that's ugly. Fourteen. We only have. Oh, Bob, I moved the boxes. Fourteen. We only have a couple left of this copper and then that white rhinestone. That's it's actually a not bad. Kind of coil bracelet. Fifteen. This one just came in yesterday. You that looks like baby poop. Is... That looks like when I eat corn and then shit it out two days later. <laughs> That's what my shit looks like. Who sees that as like, I would like to wear that, please? Ew! One of my absolute, 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 absolute favorites right here. That's one of your favorites? Listen, Furby, next time I take a shit after eating corn, I'll just string them together and send them to you. It'll be more authentic. That was a joke. I'm not going to do that. Number 20. These, this one came out this last week. Ugly. You know <laughs> right. They brought this back in a different color. They brought it back in the silver and the That one's also not too bad. A little gaudy for my taste, but definitely not the chunkiest and nastiest bracelets I've ever seen. You know, at least it's not the corn shit bracelet. <laughs> 25 is the urban. The fuck you have is the red that? Leather and then that brown cording that wraps it. Yeah, the bright red, bright red. This is these are wooden earrings. And then it almost has like that sombrero kind of look to it, right? It does kind of look like a that sombrero. Leather. And we only have, I think, two left of this one. Then you have that silver with those that just the that fuck is asymmetrical that? shape. And then you have that rhinestone right there in the center. Is it meant to be sideways like that? Right there, like off centered? These are all great for the holiday season coming up. You have That looks um, like straight Christmas, costume volume, jewelry. Thanksgiving. Red is a, like that like, dark red. Actually like from Party City. And <laughs> Christmas and then you have Valentine's Day. No. So you can get a lot of usage out of this one. That is so ones. cheap, dude. Anyway, I found this one tonight in the box, which I didn't realize. I only have three left of this. Mm, baby poop green, poop. cute. Um, it's 2.30 in the morning. I need to go to bed. You need to go to bed. I just know I love you. I love what I do. Um, I love the people I'm associated with. I love the people that I've gotten to know who either hated me, had a different perception of me, or always liked me. So it's fun to get to know people. But what I love more about this, look right here. Here's what I love the most. It's right here on my fridge. Paparazzi's mission statement <laughs> is to bring strength, independence, and empowerment um, to the individuals and their families by building confidence and financial freedom through affordable fashion. While $5 jewelry may not change the world, we believe that those who wear it will. This is why I, that scared me, that scared me. But this is why I believe in what I do every single day. Right? So stupid. Okay. 100%, I believe in that. He has a picture of himself on the fridge. Is that weird? My own that might be a little my weird. Own development is seeing others find their voice and others find their voice. Why does he have so many cutting boards? Oh my God. Them. 
um, where they can dream and have um, success. Look at all so, those cutting boards. You all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful night. Know that I love you. Thank you for coming in here. That's like the most shocking part of this whole thing. Good night. Monica, I love you. Carla, I'm glad you're asleep. What so, about me? Love you all. Have a wonderful night. What about me? Damn, son. All right, that was that. Obviously, let me know what you think down below. Well, guys, I think it's time to thank my patrons and my members. Oh, and also thank you to Care of for sponsoring this video. Links down below. Use my code. Do all the things and get yourself a sweet discount on some new supplements and stuff. And now thank you to my financial supporters. The people I'm about to name off are my YouTube members and my Patreon members. They get access to things like our private discord server, exclusive pictures of pop tart. <laughs> we have a postcard club, early access to videos sometimes, and sometimes more. So if any of that sounds good to you, you can go to patreon.com slash Savannah Marie, or you can click the join button beneath this video to uh, join my YouTube memberships. Whatever works for you works for me just fine. So with that, the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to Hula Chowdown, Janelle Pratt, Amanda Shannon, Christy Taylor, Elizabeth Wyatt, Eve Blondo, Nitty Dragon, Leanne, Meredith Nakata, Ryan Mew, Sheila Tapia, Alice W, Boris Skeller, Caroline Reed, Casey Scraper, Daniel Urena, Hannah Morrison, Hannibal Crossing, Heidi Haw, Kim Cartwright, Maddie Darley, Marley Fletcher, Ray, Tuesday the 13th, Blazed Goddess, Martine Hubert, Carrie K, Vegan Chicky Nuggy, Love to Be Evil, Mira S.I.K., Lily Balcha, Natalie Scott, Carol Jenks, Colin F., The Best Elephant, Jessica Billhart, Laura Jensen, Mitchie 84, Jess Kronfeld, Emion, Auntie Lou, Little Birdie, and Fallon Lowry, and to the rest of my financial support Thank you so much for being here and being you. Even if you're not a financial supporter, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I'm sure it's going to be long and staring at Furby's face for that long is probably difficult. So I apologize, but I also hope you had a good time. <laughs> if you didn't know, we are watching a reality show, a quote unquote reality show, a YouTube series that's supposed to be a reality show about paparazzi distributors living their lives called Era's Girls. We've been watching it live on this channel every Tuesday night. Usually, well, on the time kind of change but usually I like to like put up a little reminder a few hours before so people know what time I'll be going on but my life is a fart so I never really know exactly what time I'm gonna go on anyway yeah be there be square man it's a fun time we always have fun <laughs> we're all like super invested in the show it started off really slow so if you're one of those people who watched the first episode and you're like mm, this isn't for me no it, it gets better I swear to god it gets better like we're all into it so <laughs> all those live replays are on my channel too so go watch them if you want to catch up before this upcoming Tuesday so we can all watch together some more. So anyway, housekeeping's done. Video's done. <laughs> Keep making waves, babes. I'll smell you all later. Mummy Tsunami out.